Hey, Daniel here from Golden Rovers, and I have some big news. I'm making an LS swap kit for the Discovery 2. Uh, I am serious. I am going to do this, and I am starting the process now. So I want to document it for you. I want to show you what it takes to do this. This is our already LS swapped Land Rover Discovery 2. It's got an issue with the flex plate. That's this thing down here. This is the second flex plate that has broken on this. The way the swap happened is it was made with the kit from the now defunct alternative conversion engineering kit. Um, and there's got to be some issue with it, maybe some alignment issue or some other issue with the parts that is causing the flex plate to just keep breaking. It's just the center part here just separates from the rest of it. Anyway, now that I have everything out, um, this is a perfect opportunity to investigate making my own swap kit. Um, and it's going to be very similar to the ACE kit in that uh, I want to keep the rover transmission. I kind of want to keep the concept the same. But there's going to be some key differences. First difference is how I want to handle the bell housing. This is what ACE did. They give you a basically a GM bell housing that has the bottom cut off. And then they welded in the plate with the rover transmission bolt holes. So part of the swap is to take out that... Um, bell housing and put in this modified one. And that's kind of a tricky and risky part of the swap because you have to make sure the transmission pump doesn't fall out and, and that sort of thing. What I would like to do is put back the original rover bell housing and then create an adapter plate that can mate the rover bell housing to the LS engine. That means that you won't have to do that extra step of changing out the bell housing. It'll be a lot easier. The first step is going to be getting basically a CAD model of this mating surface. I need all the bolt hole locations. Uh, I need this shape, right? Uh, same for the, for the LS engine, although that's a lot easier because you can open up an old book and find yourself some, some of the, um, the patterns, the bolt hole locations with measurements. I've been trying a few ways to transfer, and I think this rubber mallet might be the best way. Just, just not even tapping, just kind of rubbing it. It's, it's kind of capturing all the edges pretty well, actually. And the fact that it's dirty is helping. So make sure you grab something dirty. Well, there it is. That's, uh, <laughs> that's as good as I'm going to get, I think. So I'm going to save this. And we're going to get scanned. The only thing that's missing is the center point. Um, <clears throat> I might figure out the center point later um, by taking some measurements. On to the engine now. This one I'm less worried about because like I said before, there are some online measurements you can use um, for most of the holes except the bottom two. But it would be nice to get the general shape of the bell housing too because I you know, it's one thing to have the bolt hole locations, but I want to follow the curves and everything. And there it is. There's the LS bell housing pattern. Uh, just did the same thing I did with the Rover one. Just rubbed it with a dirty hammer. All right, just got back from FedEx where I got scans from the sacred scrolls. So I should have the patterns now digitized. So here's what that looks like. I've got both bell housings scanned, so this will be a great reference for figuring out the overall shape and the hole positions. It's both of them looking good. Now I'm going to bring those those uh, scans into Fusion 360. I already placed the most of the hole positions for the LS bell housing based on this drawing I found online. So I will use these as my reference points to align and scale the scan. All right, I got my image imported, and as you can see, it's tiny. Right, got my drawing all calibrated here. Everything's lined up as it should be. Now I'm gonna trace around the overall shape. And then I guess we'll print it, maybe even 3D print it, and see how close we are. Right, so traced out the outline. So there it is. Um, so I'm going to 3D print it and hopefully it's good. Now it's time to do the same with the rover pattern. Here's how I scale it, by the way. You select here, calibrate, and it'll ask you to select two points. 
and tell you how and, and ask you how long what's the distance between those two points right I've got the rover pattern here now uh, I've got the LS pattern overlapped now I need to make sure they are aligned that the two centers are aligned I'm confident in the LS pattern center because I came from measurements at the rover pattern uh, I'm just kind of estimating based on the circular shape of the inside of the bell housing but so I think I'm going to take some real world measurements between the dowel pinholes and the center point and um, reference those into this drawing to refine it later. But I wanted to give this a try right away. So I combined the two drawings into a shape. It's basically a flat plate that can bolt to both the engine and the rover transmission. So this will probably bolt to the engine first, then the transmission just bolts to this about a half inch thick. So I'm going to 3D print this and see where I'm at. Well, visually at least it looks absolutely spot on. I need to try with the dowel pins, but I printed these holes a little too small. But it looks it looks good. On the rover side, it also looks good. Lining up very nicely. At least visually. Alright, next I want to find the exact dowel pin locations on the rover bell housing. So I've got these pins with a pointy end that I 3D printed. And then this contraption is going to be my center point location. So let me show you how that works. Just grab this. Put it over there. So making sure my centering jig is all the way in. Now I have my three most important points, the dowel pins in the center. So what I'm going to do next is take a piece of wood or something, like a sheet, and stick it on there and stamp the three points onto that piece of wood and measure from there. I'm going to take this piece of drywall, actually, and flip it over and press it a bit to get my three marks. And that's what that looks like. I've got my... My three points here, my center, I marked top and bottom, and this is the starter side. So I'm going to be able to measure these lengths precisely and get that angle precise. And it's going to be relative to the center of the bell housing, which is the important part. All right, back in the CAD program, I took my measurements off of the sheet of drywall, brought them over here, the angle, 158 and a half degrees. So now I've got the rover pattern, the LS pattern. I'm going to combine the two into one single adapter plate that can bolt to both sides. So here it is. These are the two shapes combined into one shape. And uh, over here we have all of the LS holes and the rover bell housing holes. So what we're going to do is for all of the rover bell housing holes, we're going to tap them to, I think it's M10. And uh, for the rover, uh, sorry, for the LS holes, we're going to countersink them so that we can use countersink bolts to bolt into the engine. Uh, we need to, them to be countersunk because otherwise the rover bell housing will overlap some of those bolts. So I'll show you that in a sec. Here's what that looks like. 3D printed. We got the LS holes countersunk, the rover holes tapped to M10. Um, and it's a uh, half inch thick right now. I'm going to show you why. So here's the LS engine with stock flywheel and a flat starter. I think we're going to need a flat starter like that. I'll show you why. Um, anyway, so if we put the adapter plate on it, you might notice something. So if you try to put this 3D printed adapter plate on it, you might notice something right away. Is that the uh, flex plate is too big and won't clear. That's because the bell housing on the rover side is smaller and uh, the LS flex plate is not going to fit in that bell housing. So what's, what happens is um, so what happens is we have this giant gap. So I think we're going to have no choice but to put an engine spacer um, and just space out the engine until we clear the flex plate and then we can have our adapter plate. So the ACE kit came with this three quarter of an inch engine spacer and as you can see ooh, we're really close. It's just I think too close for comfort. Um, I think we should go with an inch of space 
before we go down to the Rover bell housing size. So one inch engine spacer, then our adapter plate, or maybe the entire spacer plus adapter plate will end up getting milled out of inch and a half billet aluminum. Um, either way, we're gonna need we're gonna need that amount of space. So an inch from the engine, then we can go down to the Rover bell housing opening and the rover bell housing will mount to these points. I think that um, probably for precision and so that the, especially so the dowel pin holes are a precise fit, the adapter plate at least will have to be, uh, I think it'll have to be CNC machined out of built aluminum. I think that's the best way to do it. In the meantime, I pulled out the harmonic balancer that came with the ACE kit and I wanted to see how they pulled off this, uh, this tone wheel thing. And it's actually super simple. This disc, it's just um, just screws to the back of it. It's a snug fit around the collar there, and then three screws countersunk M5, which seems pretty pretty simple. I mean, um, if we wanted to reproduce this, we would just uh, have to we get this plate laser cut. Um, maybe we have to countersink our own holes. No drill and tap. Um, and when the pulley is pressed into the engine all the way, there's actually enough space. There's enough space here for this plate to, you know, there's enough gap here for this plate to fit fine with plenty of extra room. So back at the computer, ta-da, there it is. There's a 3D shape. Easy as that. 3D printed a mock-up just in case. Overlays perfectly. Next, while I'm waiting for this to get laser cut, came over here and designed a mount for the crankshaft position sensor that will align it with the tone wheel there. Uh, Ace had a mount that was like a two-piece cobbled together thing. I didn't like it, so this is 3D printed right now, but uh, I ordered it to be laser cut and bent. Wait for this to get laser cut. I started to get curious about the Ace Kit Electronics and this little ECB box that came with the kit. Um, I'm gonna crack it open and see what's inside. Well, I guess they did not want to make this easy since they filled the whole thing with some sort of silicone sealant. Let's see if I can peel it off. Wow, I suppose they didn't want us to see this because I've been peeling at this for a while now. I don't know if they were trying to hide their terrible solder job or something else, but it doesn't look too complicated. It looks like it's a simple um, simple PCB with a couple resistors and some wires tied together. It's like, it's not extremely complex. So this should be pretty easy to, to reproduce. I thought there'd be some sort of computer in here, but no. Well, I finally peeled off all that silicone and I find this very interesting. It's a lot simpler than I expected. So first of all, the black and green wires, which are the throttle position sensor, Rover and LS throttle position sensor, those are just connected together. They don't connect to anything, they're just connected to each other. And then for the VSS, we've got the Rover VSS in red, so that goes to a 105 capacitor which goes to the yellow but also goes through a 1 million ohm resistor to the blue wire so that's going to be pretty easy to reproduce i made a little diagram for myself and um yeah i'm not not worried about that anymore i get that gives me peace of mind knowing it's really easy to make more of those now looking at the accessories, um, looking at the alternator bracket here, the ACE kit came with like aluminum blocks to help you reuse this bracket and reuse your Rover alternator, which I've got a Range Rover one here with 150 amps. But um, a lot of people would like to run the GM alternator on here and you, with the GM alternators, you got options for bigger power and all that. Um, and nobody really liked the belt routing that one on here is kind of funky and created a lot of squeals. And wouldn't you know it, ICT Billet 
makes this beautiful kit for the GM alternator to mount in this upper left location. Exactly what we want. ICT Billet already makes it beautifully machined out of billet aluminum. I mean, what more could you ask for? Well, there's that. ICT Billet alternator bracket. Honestly, seems perfect. I'm having a hard time thinking of any way it could be better. Got a Powermaster 220 alternator up here. It, the kit came with uh, this tensioner, this pulley, uh, pretty much everything you need. So, yeah, I, I'm thinking just, just use this. It's good. I feel like I've figured out pretty much everything I need for the swap, except the power steering and air conditioning bracket um, and the engine mounts partially. The power steering, I like to use a GM Type 2 power steering pump, which is found in the in the early 2000s Corvettes. Um, and I noticed, oh, it's got a M16 by 1.5 output, and that's the same thread that Renault Rover uses. And go figure. It threads right in, and it seems like it's going to fit perfectly. I, I don't know if it's going to leak, but um, this is promising. So that's nice. No, no weird uh, fittings or adapters needed. So actually, I want to talk about the Ace Kit Electronics a little bit more. Because um, I think I understand what's going on here now. So first of all, the throttle position sensor for the Rover and GM are connected to each other without any type of uh, without anything between them so that probably means that the two signals are compatible it's probably just a range from 0 to 12 volts to tell the computer how how open the throttle is and so the rest is just VSS related that's vehicle speed sensor this is the the red is the rover vehicle speed sensor cable so I believe this comes from the transfer case the transfer case has a vehicle speed sensor that I think is probably pointing at some sort of reluctor wheel, which is like a like a wheel with a bunch of teeth. And I believe what's happening is that coming in here is a square wave signal. And uh, the GM VSS is two wires, positive and negative. And I think it's expecting a pulse signal. A pulse signal looks more like spikes with with space between them. So what this circuit is, is a resistor and a capacitor, also known as a RC circuit. And uh, I think this serves as a high pass filter, meaning it'll only let through high frequency signals. So when you put a high pass filter on a square wave, what you get at the other end is spikes. As a square wave goes up rapidly, that creates a spike. When it sits flat, the voltage stays at zero. And then when it spikes down, when the square wave goes down, that creates a downward spike, and then it bounces back to zero. I think it's converting a square wave to a pulse wave and giving the GM computer a vehicle speed so that it can run the engine properly because it's supposed to adjust fuel and and idle and, and stuff like that when you're like coasting or that sort of thing so it doesn't just stall out when you stop at a red light. There's There's things like that, so that's why it needs that. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. We've pretty much re-engineered everything. We figured out everything except for still working on the power steering bracket and the AC bracket. We're still going to work on the engine mounts with the engine in there. But right now I'm waiting on some prototypes of all, all the brackets and reluctor wheel for the crankshaft and that sort of thing. So, And uh, of course the adapter plates. So when that comes in, That'll be our next video is going to be a test fit of the engine with those prototypes. So look forward to that and thanks for watching.